In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create repeating patterns like these and more right within Xtool Creative Space. So we'll first start with the diamond pattern. So we just need a rectangle. And if we hold shift, we can create a square. If I zoom in, I'm going to make that about 20 millimeters. And then we just need to go to the grid array options, select that. And we don't want any spacing in the X and no spacing in the Y. We can choose columns up to 10 in the X and Y, but for this example, I'm just going to choose five in the X and five in the Y and select done. This is grouped, which is fine. Then we just need to go to the offset tool and choose external and inner and make an offset distance of about one millimeter and confirm. Once that's completed, if we just zoom in, we can just select the inside lines and move them out of the way. That's the original shape. So we are left with a group of small squares and a large external square. If we select both of those, right click, we can choose make compound vector. And if we put onto the engrave process, that is what we've got. Now, I'm just going to move this over here and we need to right click and ungroup and select these five squares here and delete and select these four squares here and delete. Then we can select all the rest and group. And then we just need to do the same thing again, which is go to offset, choose external and inner, and again, a distance of one millimeter and then click confirm. This can take quite a bit of time depending on your PC and how many squares you have. The more squares, the longer it'll take. Okay, once we have that, we just need to do the same again. Select this inner original piece and move it out of the way. And then select everything else, right click, make compound vector. And I'll just put onto the engrave process again. From there, we just need to select this one and choose a line center and choose this one and again a line center. There we have this inner shape and if we select all and rotate 45 degrees by holding shift we have the diamond pattern. But as these are two separate shapes we just need to select both and choose unite. And we can check everything is correct if we go back to the score layer you can see everything's joined up correctly. So I'm just going to delete this and there we have the first shape and I'm just going to move that there. For the second shape, we are going to need a circle. So if we hold shift again and select that and make that about 20 millimeters, and I'm just going to align center and zoom in. Again, we need to go to the grid array tool and select zero spacing in X and Y. And again with this, I'm only gonna choose five and five. So there we have an array of circles. We need to go to the offset tool and choose external, inner, a distance of one mil, and then click confirm again. So again, we're going to do the same thing again. Select the inside original shape, move it out of the way. Select both of these, right click and choose make compound vector. That's what we have. And then we just need to do the exact same thing again. If we ungroup and then select these five and delete and these four and delete, we can then choose everything else, right click and group. And again, we just need to go to offset and all we need to do is choose external, internal, a distance of one millimeter and choose confirm. And then we just need to do the same thing again is just select the inside shape and we can delete that one. Then select the rest, right click, make compound vector. I'm gonna put that onto the engrave process. And if I zoom out, whoops. And if we move over, we need to select this one and choose align center. And then we can choose this one and again, align center. And there we have this pattern. From there, we can just choose unite to join them all together. 
And I'm just going to put this one over here with the other one. And the process would be the same for any other shapes. And if we went to basic shapes and chose this star here, we could do the exact same thing with going to the grid array tool and then offsetting to create something like this. You wouldn't need to do a second layer for this one. You just leave it as a single layer like this, ready to add to your different projects. So if you were to make a 10 by 10 grid of the same patterns, you could end up with patterns like this. And to use them, I'm just going, I'm just going to copy and paste this one and align it to center. Up here, I actually have an, a letter A and a heart. And the process is the same for anything. I'm just going to take this heart, which is a solid heart with an edge rim, which is made just by using the offset tool. And I'm just going to align that to center. And we just need to make sure the pattern goes over the shape that we want to cut into. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and scale it up. And with the heart, I'm just going to copy and paste that over here. So all we need to do is choose both and go to Unite. That joins everything up. If we put onto the score layer, you can see we have this. All we need to do is go to Edit Compound and I want to delete everything that is outside of this large heart shape, just leaving the inner heart shape. So I'm just going to go around and delete everything. I'll just probably speed this up. Okay, so we're left with the inner heart shape. All, all we need to do now is release compound vector of this one and then delete the inside heart. And because we had this one centered, all we need to do is go to align center, select everything, right click and make compound vector. And there we can see we have the heart shape with decoration. And the process is the same for any other shape, such as the A. And I'll speed this one up just so you can see it working the same. And here you can see the finished A and heart with the two different decorative patterns cut out of them. And if you are struggling to create the larger patterns on XCS, then I have made a free digital download on my Design Find store. And whilst you're there, please have a look around. And if there's anything else that you fancy, please consider making a purchase, as it all helps me to create these videos for you. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.